this out. <laughs> Our first wintry weather of the year. And a little bit of snow, but mostly ice. I was trying to make a snow angel, but it didn't work out. No, it's not going to work out on this. <laughs> mostly ice here. You're just sliding around. Probably ice skate on there. Yeah. Not working out there. Oh, got a little bit, but no. <laughs> so guys, as we're walking out here, we should be careful because we could slip and fall. And uh, I've done that in the past. Going to go do the chores and then hit the patch of ice, slip, fall, and land right on your shoulders. So that wasn't fun. Well, thankfully, it was just a lot of sleet that we got and it wasn't freezing rain because that's normally what we get around here. And then that's whenever power starts going out. Trees start falling, power lines are coming down, and uh, then you're really stuck and cold if you don't have wood heat or some other source of heat. So we live in the southern Piedmont area of North Carolina and uh, it's not on a regular basis that we get wintry weather. Uh, we rarely get snow and if we do it's kind of like a dusting or whatever but uh, when we do get the wintry weather we tend to get ice and uh, it's not not really fun to deal with. You can't really throw snowballs but they end up being ice balls which are a lot more dangerous so yeah. no snowballs today. Ice balls. No ice ball today. No ice man. <laughs> Nor ice woman. <laughs> or ice baby. Nor ice baby. No, nothing. No projectiles today. <laughs> like I can work on my dance moves. Ooh. Ooh. Over here. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Whoa! Spin a Rooney there. No falling though. Nope. <laughs> it's like an ice skating rink with unlevel un ice and no skates. Yeah. <laughs> the top layer is snow. Well, you can't make a little snowball there. Just that really thin layer on top, isn't it? <laughs> yep. I'd like to see if we can get this charge back up in the sun, more direct sun, since we don't have a lot of heat over, or a lot of light over here to fix it still on, buddy. So yeah, that's frozen there. I can't turn it off. So Lacey, would you get some warm water that we can pour on here so we can turn this off so I can get this charge back up? Yeah, let's go do that. Yeah. Because one of the things about the winter time is there's less sunlight, and when you're using here, solar energizers, you need sun to charge them up. So, uh, all right. let's also check their water here. Yeah, their water is pretty frozen there too. I can punch through it, but see if we can do something about that. Recently, I saw something online about how to keep your livestock water from freezing. So, we're going to try that out here in a little bit. Got 
that out of there. Yeah. Right about here, get some more sun. I just want to play. What? What is this? Hey. Hey. Hey, man. Hey, little guy. Hey. Nope. Ah, dude, you gotten so much bigger. Man. Look at these little nubs. Horns are gonna come in. Shh, you're fine. Oops. In addition to this being our first wintry weather of the year, this is our first time with wintry weather and raising goats, especially like this little one here. It's the first time, right? And uh, thinking about the weather and looking around, Made me think back of times that we've had some more extreme wintry weathers, at least for our area. And uh, I think back, I think I was in middle school, something like that, and uh, we had well over a foot of snow, and then we got a bunch of ice, and school was shut down for like the whole week for us. And I still remember stores and things just being closed, and and just think how that could easily happen again and uh, make sure that we have the things that we need to do to prepare and maybe hopefully have milk from goats here too. And thinking back to storms past, I remember in 2002, right after, a couple months after Mike and I met, um, he actually moved to Florida. Mm -hmm. And here we had this crazy, crazy ice storm. I think we had like a half an inch of ice and that's when it gets really nasty here. I woke up and I was thinking, why is it thundering? And it actually wasn't thunder. It was all the limbs breaking off of trees in the uh, woods behind my parents' house. And the power was out. And I think their power stayed out for over a week. And you know, we were cooking in the fireplace and doing all this. But you know, that's the kind of winter weather that I don't like, but is typical for in this area. <laughs> Alright, so just a little bit of ice in there. Mostly the water did not freeze. Got a few sunflower seeds in there though. Hey, get them some more. This is the second year in a row now that I've brought in animals into our greenhouse hot tunnel here. And there's a number of benefits to doing that. One is it makes dealing with them so much easier, especially with the goat here and having the little one tending to them. And you can see the water kept the water from freezing. And uh, while they're here and they're pooping, they're also adding fertilizer. So that way when we grow things in the growing season, it helps to add more nutrients to the soil. So in addition to it being more beneficial to the farmer, more beneficial to the animals, it's also more beneficial to the future crops. So a lot of reasons to do that. Speaking of poop, 
Leaving some right here for us. <laughs> in the pond are frozen and they're like what we've never been on the pond when it's frozen what's going on with this water why is it hard so they're still trying to figure it out and them over here are like uh we'll leave that up to you guys to figure that out <laughs> they're working through it there sliding on ice skating ducks <laughs> Poor guys, come on. <laughs> it's like, it's okay over here, I right am. I think Greg is breaking up the ice there. I'm not sure if you heard that, but it made a really neat sound. The very first pair of ducks that we had, I still remember when it got cold like this, I was thinking, oh, the ducks are just gonna be too cold. We need to bring them inside. And we actually didn't live here on the property yet. We still lived in town in the city. So we took those pair of ducks and brought them, brought them to our house. And, and then as we got to learn more about ducks, we're like, well, ducks are actually more suitable for the winter than chickens are. They have a way of staying warmer with their 
their feed and their, their body temperature just stays higher so they're much more suited to be able to handle these cold temperatures and uh, I can still remember the first time this right here wasn't the first time I've seen ducks <laughs> try to be on a pond that has ice in it uh, they tried it before but this flock here I think that was their first time trying it but uh, it's, it's interesting each time they're kind of like what is wrong with this water <laughs> so the duck water is frozen too so that idea I was talking about earlier, let's go ahead and work on that now. Alright, that'll work. This one. Alright, so I got this idea from the Oak Hill Homestead. It was an article that they had just about keeping your waterers from freezing. The first thing you need to do is take your bottles and rinse them out. Make sure they're rinsed out. Next we need a funnel because we got to put salt in here. You have a funnel that would go in here? You can make a funnel out of a piece of paper. <laughs> Real easy. Just start Genius. rolling it up. All right. The next we put in a quarter to a half a cup of salt in each bottle. That's what the, that's what the article says. I like to just fill it up, not all the way to the top, and um, that way you can still shake it up and dissolve all that salt, and then you can add more water if you need to. Just want to draw some lines on here where the, how full it is. Well, you got to make sure it's dry when you do it. So I was got to thinking, I was like, I don't want salt water in our animals water. So if I make a line, then we can just check it and make sure it's not leaking out. So you should know that the liquid level should be right there. Well, my marker got wet, I guess. We'll just make a line right there. But looking at this, I know that this is fake pink salt. And I bought this at the dollar store, I think. But I found out, this is I bought it before we used Redmond salt, but I think I was listening to a podcast um, from somebody from Redmond and they were saying that if your pink salt turns your water pink whenever you mix it together that it's not real pink Himalayan salt it's actually had dyes put in it so that's how you can tell if your salt is real is if you put a bunch of it in uh, water your water should stay clear and, uh, and not be pink like this so we keep the good salt for us and using the cheap stuff for, well, let's just say keeping the water warm. Or we could use it to salt our steps or something like that. I've just kept it around because I figured there would be some use for it. Or if we absolutely had to use it, then we would still have it. But it's not our salt that I'm going to use on our food on a regular basis. And speaking of keeping the water warm, why do you think it is that this actually should work? <laughs> well salt will actually lower the freezing point of water that's why they put salt on the roads in the winter time so what i'm thinking is that the water inside here is not going to be frozen unless it gets really really cold and, it, and normally it just hovers around 32 25 to 32 or something like that around here um, when it gets really cold so i'm thinking this bottle is going to float to the top of the water bucket and it's not going to freeze, so it's going to keep that top layer from freezing. So that's my theory. As well as having air in the bottle, which should keep the bottle, I think, more at the top of the water so it could kind of move around a little bit. But that's just what we think. We, we, we never have sub-zero temperatures here. Like the coldest it will get will be in the teens. And then, as Lacey says, the highs would be like in the 30s and like 
Like it's rare for us to be in the highs in the in the low 20s. It's just really rare for here. But uh, let's take these out there and see if they work. It looks like the ducks and Greg or Goose did not enjoy their swim because they're back up in position, ready to go back in like they normally do at the end of the day. So uh, we'll probably just let them back in. Sale and I have each of the flocks of ducks on a rotation for being out on the pond. So not all of our ducks go out all to the pond at one time, just for the health of the pond. And uh, we just really try to make sure that we have some kind of rotation going. And uh, it is good for them to get out on the pond, especially when it's not frozen because they get out there and they just kind of create more oxygen in the pond to help the pond be healthier. So just being mindful of that in various ways. All right, so let's go ahead and put our salt water bottle in here. And a little bit of air in there does keep it floating a little bit. So I added a salt water bottle to the waterers of each of our flocks of ducks, our goats, Our chickens. And our dogs too. Ready? Ready? Come on now. Here you go. And now this morning, I'm out here to check on them, starting with our goats right here. So here is the salt water bottle here. And you can see there's, there's some ice in there, but it is mostly not frozen. So this one looks good. So they've had water that's not frozen, just a little ice, a little ice water. Not too icy, not like before. Let's just go check on our ducks too. And down here, the water for the ducks. Let's see. Right here is the bottle and uh, just a little layer of ice. So overall, I would consider the salt water bottle test a success because even though it didn't completely keep the water from freezing, it did greatly reduce how much of the water was frozen and how much ice is there. And that still will enable the animals to still get some water and just to easily be able to get down and get some water and drink from. And none of the water in the salt water bottle, because of the salinity, none of it froze at all. You can see there's, there's no ice in there at all. So have any of you tried salt water bottles? I've also heard of cowboys doing milk jugs with salt water in the troughs for their cows. Uh, but have any of you done this method? If you have, let me know in the comment section below. That's it for now. See you next time.